What's good, people? It's your man, Fort Knox, live and direct. You know what I mean? This is probably the calmest you'll ever catch me. <laughs> My brother Brian laughing right now. He knows what it is. It's all love. My cousin and I, Dwayne, shout outs to my, that's family, up in Toronto. T Dot, you know how that is. But uh, when we were younger, we started watching MTV when it was all music videos, when it first started. I'm talking about The Who, Duran Duran. Our families used to uh, trade during the seasons or during Christmas. They would come down to New York. I'm from New York, born in the Bronx, lived in Long Island. Uh, and they lived in Toronto, of course. So they would come down one year, we would go up one year. I went up to Toronto, and that's when I heard Cool G rap. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yo, I'm gonna tell y'all something. Cool G rap and Scarface. I'm, yo, but G rap? <clears throat> Madness. Are you kidding me? Men at Work. That was the record that did it. Cop my first album, Run DMC. You know what I mean? I had the uh, the Fisher Price uh, uh, record player. You know what I mean? So you know, I caught my album. I used to, I used to play it like every day, and just wild out. And uh, I moved down to Atlanta in '86. We moved to Stone Mountain. Started. You know, I was I was freestyling, just rhyming, doing my thing, boom, boom, boom. I used to walk down the halls in school. They used to think I was crazy because I would just be rapping to myself, just rapping, just walking to class after class, rapping, you know what I mean? But when it came to battling, when it came to battling, I was the, always the one that they called, yo, psst, go get him, go get him, <laughs> go get him. <laughs> and I'd finish him, you know what I mean? That's what I was up seeing. I trans transitioned from artist to artist manager. While I was doing artist management, shout outs to Issues, uh, Nestle, another battle rap extraordinaire. Uh, I did event promotions with my partners, Big Ty and Hotep. Big ups to them, Hustle University, the whole nine. And uh, we did an event called Producer Swap Me, which was for producers. And it popped off crazy. A lot of name brand producers that have produced hit records now came from out of Producer Swap Me. There's no cop to it, because it's all love, like it's a family. Honorable C Note. M16, Super Hot Beats. Then we started an event called True School Tuesday. Craziness. Shout out to Jaws of Life, my co-host when it came to that. Yo, it, it was love. It was love. And, a, and, and the bottom line is we catered to the community. As far as the local talent that's here, we provided platforms for them to perform on from producers to artists, and we kept it moving from there. Now writing sessions is popping and we're providing platforms for songwriters. And there used to be a club called The Warehouse, all right? It was off of Marietta Street downtown here in Atlanta. One night they booked ODB, God Bless the Dead, to come through and smash out. This is when he was, this is doing his heyday, like, yo, craziness. You know what I'm saying? As far as Brooklyn Zoo, all of that, you know what I mean? So me, I was always the one who wanted to battle cats. I wanted to battle rappers. I was like, nah, I'm battling everybody. I'm slaying everybody. He's on stage with his brother, uh, 12 o'clock. And I'm like, yo, I want to battle. 12, now, ODB is on stage, front stage. 12 o'clock is sort of by the side. And he, I'm like, yo, son, let's battle. He's like, yo, word. So I start battling him. Lace him. It's a rap for him. ODB hears, he's like, yo, some battle? Like, yo, I love to battle. So he calls me out on stage. We go at it. The crowd is like, yo, Knox, you got it. Like, they making noise for me crazy. He's feeling a way about it. He's like, yo, it's a setup. He pulls out a gun, licks off a shot in the air. The crowd parts like the Red Sea. He jumps off stage, stomps his way right out the bar. I was, it was madness. It was madness after that. You know what I mean? <laughs> he was hot. You know what I mean? But that was like very impactful for the simple fact that, I mean, it was dramatic, what have you. But, you know, nobody got hurt. None of that. It was just a, a memorable moment. Take it even deeper. Yo, shout out to Ryan Cameron because... He was there that night and he was on his, he was on Ryan Cameron in the morning one night reminiscing like, yo, I remember this cat. 
who battled ODB and he was telling the story. He didn't know it was me, you know what I mean? But it was just a funny, small world type situation like that. That was primarily the maneuver at first as far as just battling as many people as possible. I remember battling Black Thought, PMD, uh, DOS FX, uh, uh, Trigger the Gambler. Like, like cats would come through and I'd be like, yo, let's do it. And But I was battling a you know, a whole lot of local talent. You know, we began, shout out to Senior Chaos, Four Rise. Yo, when he started doing like this, you know I mean? y'all who know, when you see that movement, he's going in. It's murder, you know what I mean? But yo, uh, beyond that, I then transitioned into artist management and work with different promoters and different venues and things of that nature, collaborations with other artists for the artists that I was managing at the time. And uh, going into event promotions, these are all these are all activities that allowed me to add to my notoriety. You know, as far as from from just from being an MC. I mean, and senior chaos will tell you, like he's done a lot of he does he's he multitasks as well, and he's still an MC, crazy. Like I don't MC, I don't rhyme anymore. You know, I host events, get it popping, do what I do. But there's a litany of activities that you can do to keep yourself active and keep your awareness up beyond just emceeing. My mother supported heavily, all right? My father, he was like, eh, he really, you know, he's not really vibing like that because the only thing is I didn't, I didn't finish college, you know what I'm saying? Like I stopped going and then I came back home. And he didn't think that was a wise decision. My mother, she wasn't feeling it, but she supported me and, you know, helps me to this day. And I, and I appreciate that. And he's, he's cool about it now. So, you know, things work themselves out. Yes, finally, I'm hosting at festivals like A3C and South by Southwest and stages with Ludacris and I've done Bone Thugs and Harmony, uh, Raekwon, Ghostface, like, those are accolades that I appreciate because it, it, it took a lot of grind. It took some it took free shows. It took, you know, sneaking up on stage and getting that mic and showing what I do. And once they got exposed to it, they was like, whoa, craziness. Like, yo, how can we work? Those are the, those are the primary obstacles. But they've been overcome and there's still more to overcome. And I'm in the process of keeping it moving. I went to U University of Georgia, and to take it further back, I went to Reed Ann High School. I actually went to high school in Georgia with a brother by the name of Brian Burton. Y'all know him better as Danger Mouse. And I was there when he came out with the, the, with, with the gray album. Like, <laughs> it was pandemonium, you know what I mean? And we was rocking together, so on and so forth. And, you know, he got his deal overseas. When he got on that tour, he said, yo, I need a hype man. We was rocking with a brother by the name of Gemini, the gifted one. I was a fan of him from back. So when that opportunity came, he said, yo, we need a hype man. He said, yo, Knox, yo, come on board. I said, word, yo, we was overseas, rocking crowds crazy. Came back, came back, his South by Southwest early. This is years ago. This is early 2000s, mid-2000s, smashed out. Shout-outs to Matt Sanzala. That's where I met my brother there, you know what I mean? So those opportunities to travel, magnificent. Shout-outs to my brother Devin. We, we recently did a, uh, a panel with uh, Maurice. It was moderated by Maurice Garland, and we had a couple other panelists. We were at a school called Best Academy, and we basically spoke to the students about other career activities beyond just being an artist, just touching the people, touching the youth and being able to be a positive role model as far as they're concerned, I, it's a privilege to me. It's a privilege to be able to rock with the masses. I mean, my goodness. I remember hosting ASAP Rocky when he came out to Masquerade. This was like two years ago. The crowd, I, you know, have you ever seen the waves in the ocean? The crowd was madness. I blacked out and it was the energy. They were vibing, and I, I live for that. That's, I'm passionate about that. You know, I'm, I'm a very energetic individual. I give energy. I like to receive energy. I want them to remember that, you know, 
Fort Knox. He was a positive individual. He was energetic, loud, and, and all sorts of this, that, and the third, but it came from a positive place. When I was 18, I caught a, a came out with a condition called Guillain Barre. And long story short, it paralyzed me from the neck down. So for three months, I was straight laid up. Lost crazy weight, went down to like a buck 30. Had to go through all sorts of rehab to get my movement back and learn how to walk and so on and so forth. So I consider my energetic being and personality a constant uh, thankfulness. Uh, to God for blessing me with the ability to move again, to get my weight back up, to, you know, and so I just express it. So at the end of the day, remembering that, remembering that it was, it, it, you know, that, that, that energy always came from a positive place. And that, you know, I did things for the community to uplift. You know what I mean? And we had a good time, you know what I mean? When he comes around, yo, we have a good time. He brings that good time with him, and we rock out. Fort Knox, live. That's the Twitter, that's the IG, that's the website.